Responsibility to ensure that it comes to a stop. If I were to ask this question, how many of us in this room or wherever you're sitting have experienced gender based violence, either directly or indirectly, where we were a victim or where someone close to us was a victim? I know for certain that a good number of us would raise our hands in the affirmative, including myself. This confirming the numbers that tell the very sad story as outlined by our Honorable Minister, Le'ana Mukhek. These numbers continue to paint a grim picture indeed. As part of the campaign against ending gender-based violence in 2020, I initiated a Stop GBV poster contest where I partnered with Met Foundation. For this contest, the participants were requested to submit a creative poster that expressed a strong message advocating for the end to gender-based violence in all its forms and child abuse. During COVID-19, as mentioned by the previous speakers, including the lockdown periods, worldwide, there was a sharp escalation in gender-based violence and child sexual abuse cases. In most of these cases, it was the most vulnerable, falling prey to the perpetrators who committed these horrible acts. Botswana, ladies and gentlemen, as we all know, was not spared from the second pandemic. While incidents against men were recorded, we saw more women and girls, in particular, enduring the most painful assaults. The victims included those living with disabilities. They continue to, to suffer. As in the other cases, the abuse by caretakers who know that these people's livelihoods depend on them entirely. For both resources, and in some cases, assistance with basic functions such as mobility. Honorable Minister Anna, allow me to quote you where you said while launching the 2020 State of World Population Report, you highlighted that 
Botswana has long been facing a gender-based violence crisis, with one in three women having experienced abuse in their lifetime, according to the 2018 National Relationship Study. The World Population Review of 2019 also places Botswana as the second country on rape cases at 92.9 per 100,000 citizens. The negative impacts of GBV on development cannot be understated as it impedes attainment of Agenda 2030 goals, specifically SDG4, achieving gender equality and empowering all girls and women. We know women carry a substantial load in our homes and communities as mothers, as wives, and as caretakers. That is why in Setswana, Rere Mosadi Tariya Sechab, indeed carrying the nation on her back. You remember, each one of us only has one back. But there she is, carrying it all. Furthermore, our Botswana Vision 2036 aspires for gender equality, stating that Botswana will be a society where all men and women have equal opportunity to actively participate in the economic, social, cultural, and political development of their country. If we do not fully address GBV against women and girls, it will hinder them from achieving their full potential and hence their important contribution, that backbone, that single spine they have, shall be hampered in the development of our country. It is disheartening that we are creating a society where over generations, these painful and traumatic experiences become a part of our children's lives, a part they cannot easily erase, as it will remain embedded as indelible images and indelible marks, replaying years on, if not decades on, after they have been actually experienced. His Excellency, the President of Botswana, as mentioned earlier, Dr. Mokhreti Erugyabetsu Masisi, during his national address in September 2020, pleaded with all of us to take action against the scourge. And he said, just so that we recap, the high incidence and the gender-based violence cases are unacceptable. It calls on all of us to take decisive steps and act collectively against it. We cannot be bystanders in a country where a segment of our population appears to have turned predators to the vulnerable members of our society, particularly women and children. And he further urged all of us and said, I therefore take this opportunity to call on individuals, families, the communities, faith leaders, the Hossi, civil society, the private sector, the media, as well as political leaders, to collectively address the challenges posed by gender-based violence. I thank the leadership of this country for the continuous efforts in fighting GBV. May Anna, you highlighted a number of interventions there. We thank you all. In heeding this urgent call to action with support from different entities, I also being part of this community of Botswana, not only that of the globe, I embarked on a national awareness campaign against gender-based violence during 2020. I can see it's still fresh in our minds. The poet spoke as if he's actually riding a bicycle. But I'll always say, I'll still say, we recall these initiatives. I'll start off with the cycling with mayors in Khaburone. Thanks, Refada Mapongo, that you've been able to make it here with us this afternoon. But I cycled in Khaburone, Jamil, Silibe Pico, and Lodate. I extended this cycling event to Raycops in Butetti West because, as we know, Butetti has the highest incidence of gender based violence cases. Where I cycled with his honor, the vice president and area MP, Res Lamba Sohan. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the partners during all these cycling events Ministry of Nationality, Immigration and Gender Affairs, Botswana Police Service, the Corsi, Development Partners, thank you, Rosado, that you are here representing them, UN agencies, Medjum, thank you for being here, youth organizations, and the private sector, all in an attempt to use unconventional means to convey this very important message of zero tolerance to gender-based violence. 
while you were writing, you did not forget the other men and women who are just as affected or who have a stake in this issue. We held stakeholder engagements. Voices came out, as the minister said, but we started talking about this freely. Other CSMs came on board also. I say that the Cape, the drama, Christmas intervention program, had a piece of made in Kasani, where they invited myself. And to make all these interactions, ladies and gentlemen, the message was, and still is very clear and very consistent. Where the victims and their families and society at large are pleading and saying that crying out for protection by law enforcement, and that's what we see law enforcement here, they're crying out for laws to be enacted, for perpetrators to be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Women and girls must recognize acts of GBV and take action. More importantly, report these cases. They're saying cultural norms which promote GBV mindset and equal power must be addressed first. I have to live in a little They admit it takes teaching our boy child to love, to care, and to control their anger. Finally, the GBV poster was one of the initiatives. Mm. Such an event attracted attention from Merck Foundation, where Dr. Senator Raja Kelish cycled with me virtually, as she said in the matter, mm. last to see anything. When I initiated the Stop GBV Best Poster Contest, where contestants mm. would use artworks in order to raise gender-based violence and child abuse awareness, mm. and its negative mm. effects, mm. and Merck Foundation were more than willing to support this initiative. Together with a number of African test leaders, I'm currently in a mother company, yeah. okay. okay. which seeks to address infertility stigma. Merck Foundation also provides scholarships, as Meraja has mentioned, to African doctors, including Botswana. The training is intended to strengthen capacity in our healthcare systems. And once again, I thank Merck Foundation for your valuable contribution to women and girls' advancement in our countries. Ladies and gentlemen, coming back to the competition, 70 applicants, about 70 applicants rendered their submissions, and we had six adjudicators. The identities shall remain a secret. And they selected the best 13 posters. And I think they will testify how very difficult it was to get the best poster. These adjudicators, again, in the spirit of many stake, stakeholders coming to the table, they were picked from Office of the President, Ministry of Youth Empowerment, Sports and Culture Development, Ministry of Nationality, Immigration and Gender Affairs, and again, University of Botswana, academia. We want to see the university participating in these community issues. I'd like to thank the adjudicators, but do not stand and do not raise your hands. You remain a secret. The contestants, as earlier mentioned, were to design posters based on the theme that the silent pandemic, GBV, child abuses. The objectives were highlighted earlier, I will not repeat those, but I'd just like to say to our esteemed finalists, some traveling from as far as Kasani, and Francis Town, thank you very much for your bravery, for participating and voicing that you still to say no to this evil. I am aware that for some, it was more than just a competition. You were sharing personal stories with the rest of us. Through the posters, we hope to get the message across as to the rest of Botswana and beyond. Congratulations to all of you. To those who did not make it, <laughs> to those who did not make it to the final, let me say you too are appreciated and recognized. I would also like to thank the Botswana Police Service, who have been a key partner in this fight, who have ensured that the fight against GBV remains a priority area, which has been evidenced in their interventions. When I started cycling in October 2020, Rema Khope, the Commissioner of Police, promised that in 2021, come 2021, 
despite the budgetary constraints, we know resources are on the shelf because of COVID. She said there will be a dedicated gender-based violence unit. I'm very happy, but true to his word, the Botswana Police Service delivered. And today, we have Mekhuizo Nengono. I thank you for being with us this afternoon. The Botswana Police Service continues to engage communities and teach them about GBV. And also, we have introduced child-friendly interview rooms. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, the day is here. The 30 Muslim finalists will receive their awards from both myself and Senator Dr. Raja Kelish, the CEO of Merck Foundation. In closing, let me once more thank Merck Foundation for this partnership. And I also extend my gratitude to other partners and stakeholders and all Botswana who have joined in this fight. Let us fight on and we must not tire to save these women, men and children who are drowning from this terrible tragedy. And I urge our families to address this as we raise boys who represent tomorrow's loving, nurturing fathers, husbands, partners, and grandfathers. This will translate to nurturing families and communities, thus building a Botswana, known for our uniqueness, which stems from Boto, peace and compassion. All of us, let us be the leaders as we raise our voices in unison to say GBV must end, child abuses must end. And let us continue the compliance with COVID protocols to ensure our safety and that of others, washing our hands, wearing masks, and distancing. I thank you all. Shukran. Danke <laughs> schon.